Good afternoon. I decided to conduct this lesson via video because I'm so excited about it. This is one of the first um, probably Bible truths that I learned from Pastor Armstrong when I began listening to him a few years ago. And uh, it took me a while to put it all together and come up with the numbers and it was several different uh, lessons to go back and forth on but it's worth it it's worth it when you know this truth it's just amazing to me this um, is entitled an in-depth explanation for the 440 and 430 years Galatians uh, 2 I'm sorry Galatians 21 8 through 12 says the child grew and was weaned and Abraham made a great feast on that day that Isaac was weaned now Sarah saw the son of Hagar, the Egyptian, whom she had borne to Abraham, mocking. Therefore she said to Abraham, Drive out this maid and her son, for, her son, for the son of this maid shall not be an heir with my son Isaac. The matter distressed Abraham greatly because of his son. But God said to Abraham, Do not be distressed because of the lad and your maid. Whatever Sarah tells you, listen to her. For through Isaac, your descendants shall be named. God reiterates that Isaac was given to Abraham specifically to carry that promise forward. Then, Genesis tells us that the moment of this separation was on the occasion of Isaac's weaning. According to Jewish rabbinical traditions, weaning could take place anywhere between 18 months and 5 years. So we take the 430 years, I'm sorry, we take the 400 years and God's promise for Abraham's descendants and add 25 of waiting and another five years for the weaning equaling 430. At this point, the 400 years begin to count. Notice that the Lord's promise begins with Abraham's descendants. So the Lord isn't starting the clock until Abraham has a descendant. Abraham's descendants will be subjected to a period of 400 years of wandering as strangers in a land that's not their own. And a part of that time will include slavery and oppression. The 400 years ends when Israel leaves slavery in Egypt and it goes back to the time Israel wandered in Canaan, which was a strange land that was not their own. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob's wanderings were a sign of faith in this promise. They lived nomadic lifestyles as a matter of choice to demonstrate their faith in this promise. They were only in Egypt 215 years. The 400 years is a representation of an account of time from when Isaac is weaned until Israel leaves Egypt. Genesis 15, 16 says, Then in the fourth generation they will return here to Canaan, for the iniquity of the Amorites, who are the Canaanites, is not yet complete. Jacob's son, Levi, entered the land. He brought a son, Kohath, with him when he entered Egypt. Even as the time Egypt began, the next generation was already alive. Exodus 13, 3. Then Kohath had a son, Am Amron, and Amron was the father of Moses. The four generations can be represented by Levi, Kohath, Amram, and Moses. Moses was the last generation to live in Egypt. Even under the most generous estimates of age, we cannot cover 400 years, much less 430 with only four generations. In Genesis 47, 8 and 9, we're told that Jacob <clears throat> was 130 years old when he and the rest of the 70 souls came into Egypt and began their stay in that land. Joseph was 39 when the family came up from Canaan. They lived a good, prosperous life in the land of Goshen for 71 years. Joseph was 110 when he died I'm sorry. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Uh, and the new Pharaoh did not know him, which means uh, they began their slavery and oppression at that time. Years between uh, Joseph's death 
and Moses' birth uh, was 64 years. Now, this is uh, based on historical accounts, but uh, scholars are quite sure that that was the right amount of years. When Moses was 80, I see Moses was 80 when the Exodus occurred. So 64 plus 80 equals 144 years of enslavement. Um, 71 plus 104 equals 215 years in Egypt altogether. Now there arose up a new king over Egypt, which knew not Joseph. Subtracting 71 from 215 leaves 144, the maximum time that Israel could have been enslaved. From Exodus, we know that Israel did not become slaves to Egypt until after Joseph died. And uh, it says, all the children of Israel were fruitful and increased abundantly and multiplied, waxed exceedingly mighty, and the land was filled with them. So God uh, purposed in his heart that uh, Israel would grow during this time. And he, uh, he managed that. He enabled this to happen. Uh, and so Exodus 12, 40 and 41 says, Now the sojourning of the children of Israel who dwelt in Egypt at the time of the Exodus was 430 years. And it came to pass at the end of the 430 years, even the self same day, it came to pass that all the hosts of the Lord went out from the land of Egypt. So let's uh, talk a little bit about Paul's commentary on this timeline in Galatians. This pulls it in even better. Galatians 3.16 says, Now the promises were spoken to Abraham and to his seed, that is Christ. And Galatians uh, 3.17 says, What I am saying is this, The law which came 430 years later does not invalidate a covenant previously ratified by God so as to nullify the promise. Paul uses two mile markers <clears throat> to anchor the 430 year period. And another anchor is given, I'm sorry, one anchor is the giving of the covenant to Abraham when he left Ur and entered Canaan, okay? This is the Abrahamic covenant. And the other anchor is the giving of the law at Mount Sinai. It is stated in this verse that the Exodus took place the same day, 430 years after the covenant with Abraham. The very same day is God not awesome in his timing and uh, in his uh, his numbers and how he brings everything together. Such exactness <laughs> that God is so careful in keeping his promises that he doesn't even round off the numbers. The Lord's uncompromising faithfulness is recorded in his perfect precision and timing. Let's pray. Lord God, we uh, we thank you for another day, Jesus, and uh, we ask that, um, as always as it has been, that you uh, you lift this um, from us, Father, and uh, let us get back to uh, a normal way of life uh, that will ultimately glorify you, Jesus. That is our promise. I mean, that is the uh, that's the way that we want to conduct ourselves, Father God. We thank you for Jesus. And the fact that uh, he covers our sins and and he did it all for us. And we love him so much, Father God. These things we ask all in your name. 